The heads of state and government also expressed deep concern with regards to the upside of attacks against the various countries. Countries of Lake Chad Basin Commission re-strategized to stamp out remnants of terrorists. We want to warn the US government not to give uh, uh, the impression that it's endorsing one particular candidate over the other. Federal government tasks the international community to be neutral ahead of 2019 general elections. And laws to curb piracy and theft of intellectual property in focus at a training for Nigerian judges. Good evening. I am Cyril Stoba in Abuja. Tonight on the news is also Elizabeth Omori in Lagos and uh, Mohammed Ibrahim in Maiduguri. Thanks for joining us on NT Network News. President Mohamed Buhari has made a strong representation for bilateral and multilateral platforms of engagement as well as collective action by member countries of the Lake Chad Basin Commission towards stamping out the remnants of the terrorist elements from the region. The president made the request while addressing an extraordinary summit of the heads of state and governments of the Chad Basin on security convened by Nigeria in N'Djamena, Chad. State House correspondent Adam Sambu reports that the summit was attended by the presidents of Nigeria, Chad and Niger, as well as the Prime Minister of Cameroon. Nigeria and the neighboring countries of the Chad Basin were recently hit by increasing attacks, particularly on military formations by the Boko Haram elements, as well as the renewed kidnapping of people for ransom. Such activities, President Muhammad Buhari said, are aimed at weakening the collective resolve by member countries to completely eradicate them from the region. This extraordinary summit of the country's leadership in Jamena Chad was convened by the Nigerian leader to reassess the situation as well as collective efforts in the task of finding lasting solutions. He told the leaders that the renewed strategy of increased mining of the general area by the insurgents as well as the deployment of unmanned aerial vehicles for surveillance activities have proved to be critical factors in the resurgence of attacks. This seemingly progressive acquisition of assault capabilities by the remnants of an already degraded sect, the president said, is worrisome. We must not cave in, he however emphasized at the closed door meeting, saying efforts must be intensified towards ensuring that the enemies of the region do not succeed in their quest to destabilize the area. President Buhari called for the reinvigoration of collective will and commitment by member countries towards the complete eradication and decimation of the remnant elements so as to ensure peace, stability and sustainable development. While noting that the twin problems of poverty and the continued shrinkage of Lake Chad have rendered the people vulnerable to terrorist activities, the Nigerian leader stressed the urgent need for concerted efforts towards recharging the lake. He restated Nigeria's commitment towards actualizing the interbasin water transfer project so as to unlock the economic potentials of the region and provide solutions to the myriad of interrelated challenges. His administration, he also said, is committed to providing the required leadership and direction for the actualization of the peace project as well as adequate political support in the renewed fight against Boko Haram and other forms of criminality in the region. The heads of state and government also expressed deep concern to the upside of attacks against the various countries and express the crucial need to change their modus operandi in the fight against Boko Haram. In this regard, the leaders took a number of decisions which included operational cooperation. In this context, they appeal to the international community to support their efforts in the fight against terrorism in the region and in the stabilization and sustainable development of the sub-region. 
They also agreed to hold regular consultations among themselves. To the gallant troops ensuring the safety and stability of the region despite all odds, participants at the summit say their welfare is and will continue to remain top priority. From Njamina Chad, Adamusambo, NTA News. In the meantime, the Nigeria and Niger Joint Commission for Cooperation has met with technical and financial partners towards implementing some of the projects that will improve the lives of citizens around the Nigeria and Niger border. Minister of State for Foreign Affairs, Khadija Bukhar Ibrahim, who declared the meeting open, asked for more synergy in achieving the goals of the Commission. Foreign Desk Correspondent Makut Simon Macham reports. The Nigeria Niger Joint Commission for Cooperation was established pursuant to the objectives of the ECOWAS Commission, which promotes regional integration and development. The Commission has been working on building development corridors between Nigeria and Niger, which target trade, infrastructural development, and people to people contacts. This meeting in Abuja seeks to mobilize financing for the acceleration of AMI projects within the corridor. We are pleading with the uh, donor agencies. Development uh, partners and also the financial experts see what you can do to move the commission much further than where it is today. Minister of State for Foreign Affairs Khadija Bukhar Ibrahim says Nigeria considers the Joint Commission significant for development and security. I wish to appeal to the development partners and donor agencies, particularly those based in Nigeria where there is no major sponsor for the program yet, to kindly support this noble cause through provision of logistics as well as financing the institutional structures for the implementation of the projects on the Nigeria side. You can, we can even invite uh, uh, some private funding and work out uh, a way for them to recover the investment over time. The meeting hopes to secure commitment from donors as well as generate more determination to achieve set goals. In Abuja, Makut Simon Macham, NTA News. In staying with regional cooperation, ECOWAS Parliament Committee is considering possible ways of eliminating double taxation and exorbitant tariffs along the borders. This is in view of the challenges associated with the ECOWAS free movement of goods and persons in the sub region. Joseph Orok reports that this is at the second ordinary session of the parliament in Abuja. This uh, issue of um, free movement of persons, we have played leave service to it. We've been moving around, we find the difficulties, the challenges crossing the borders, even as human beings, not to talk of goods and services. To get the ECOWAS protocol on free movements of goods and persons working, as well as to address issues on double taxation, is what the committee is considering in collaboration with the ECOWAS Commission to make it more practically working. And what is the update on the ECOWAS Common External Tariff to Member States? Nigeria, before the advent of the CBT, um, had several tariff banks. They went through the process of reducing them and gradually adjusting to the hard five ECOWAS findings reveals have not reached optimal tax level, which is why the committee is deliberating on to complement the efforts of the ECOWAS Commission. In Abuja, Joseph Orok, NTA News. Our Saudi Arabian Minister of Petroleum, Industry and Mineral Resources, Khalid Al Fali, is in Nigeria to seek collaboration in stabilization of the global crude oil market ahead of oil. OPEC meeting in Vienna, Austria this December. Correspondent Lydia Sampson reports that with a visit, Nigeria-Saudi relations are expected to be further strengthened. Saudi Arabia is the leading producer of the world's most important product, oil. However, the country's oil market behavior depends on circumstances, with stability of OPEC and the world market the primary gold. Saudi's oil minister Khalid Al Fali is in Nigeria as part of his visit to critical oil producing countries to widely consult on how to address volatility in the global oil market. Nigeria and Saudi Arabia are uh, very uh, close countries uh, politically, uh, culturally, socially. Uh, it's fair to say that uh, 
Nigeria is uh, a cornerstone, if not the cornerstone, within the African continent. Nigeria's Minister of State Petroleum Resources, Emmanuel Ibe Kachuku, described their meeting behind closed doors as fruitful and acknowledged Saudi Arabia's key role in stabilization of the global oil market. Kachuku said Nigerian government will collaborate with the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia to revamp the country's refineries. The substance of our conversation has basically nudged on the uh, oil outlook today, uh, what is happening, where we are going, what we need to do. Both ministers commended stability in Nigeria's oil and gas sector, reiterating that all hands will be on deck to ensure stability in the global crude oil price in 2019. In Abuja, Lydia Samson, NTA News. And for a bit from the legislature now, the House of Representatives has passed a second reading, a bill for an act to establish the Nigerian Minerals and Mining Commission. National Assembly correspondent Lami Ali reports that the passage of the bill is in line with government's efforts to make the sector more vibrant. The Nigerian Minerals and Mining Commission Act is an establishment bill which will repeal the Nigerian Minerals and Mining Act 2007. Forwarded from the Senate to the House for concurrence, debates on the bill saw members highlighting its benefits to Nigeria's economic diversification drive. The bill, Mr. Speaker, creates opportunities for local and foreign investors and establishes a regulatory framework for the Nigerian mining industry. Especially against the backdrop of the gospel of diversification of Nigerian economy away from oil. In the Mineral Mining Act, it is stipulated. Nobody will be given license, nobody will have the right to do mining without the consent of the community, without community relations agreement. These are things revised by the ministry. The bill was referred to the Committee on Solid Minerals for further legislative scrutiny. The House considered and approved five reports, one of which is the report on a bill to establish the Federal Capital Territory Area Council Service Commission to regulate the employment and working conditions of staff. The House, while discussing matters of urgent public importance, decided to investigate alleged violation of Pencom Act in certain appointments following a motion by Representative Benjamin Wayu. Note that it is dangerous and too risky to leave a treasury of nine trillion without proper custodians and regulators. Speaker Yakubu Dogara at Thursday's plenary also announced the defection of four lawmakers from the National Assembly, Lami Ali, NCA News. Secretary to the Government of the Federation, Boss Mustafa, has advocated more participation of the academic community in democratic governance in Nigeria. He stated this while delivering a paper entitled The Role of the Academia in Consolidating Nigeria's Democracy at the Distinguished Personality Lecture of the Department of History and International Studies of the Babcock University, Elisha Remo, Ogun State. Shegun Lavoli reports. The Secretary to the Government of the Federation, Boss Mustafa, will observe that government alone cannot solve all the problems of the society, challenge the academia to get more actively involved in the democratic process and not be contended with serving as returning officers during elections. The SGF specifically tasked academic institutions in the country to continually appraise the policies and programs of government at all levels and offer constructive criticisms when necessary for the entrenchment of good governance and democratic ideals. If there's anything we need in this country today, at all levels of government, starting with the most minute, which is the local government system, is to make sure that we deepen the core values of good governance, without which we will continue to have the kind of rot that exists. The Ogo State Governor, Senator Ibikule Amosu, represented by the Secretary to the State Government, Taiwo Adeolua, said that his administration will continue to partner tertiary institutions in the state to ensure that the outcome of their research is enjoyed by all and sundry. He commended the organizers for the initiative, noting that the title was up, coming at the time the country was preparing for the 2019 general elections. In Abeokuta, Shegun Laoli, NTA News. And it's time for our first break tonight. The news continues shortly. Stay with us. 
Thanks for staying with us on the news. Now, the impact of the mass media and the society in this century has engaged stakeholders on how the conventional media can channel its energy against misleading information which may undermine human development. Usman Aliu says this was the message at the annual lecture of the Federal Radio Corporation of Nigeria. It's effective, fast and simple. Thus, the new media in the developing world. But mischief minds manipulate with information capable of undermining peace and human development, especially in a society like Nigeria with diverse cultures, ethnicity and creed. The federal government takes it as a necessity to educate the Nigerian public about the dangers of news that are not real. Lai Mohammed, the Minister of Information and Culture, has been championing this cause. The UK Parliament is so concerned that they are even contemplating uh, you know, um, putting a levy on social media news. And I know many countries in the world, like Zambia and Co, that have actually legislated against the social media. But we continue to say in Nigeria, we will not do that, but we continue to appeal to the conscience of the media. Now, the 2019 elections, as they are coming, we should be prepared for more fake news. Again, a forum like this one seeks to highlight the role of conventional media in tackling fake news and hate speech, which contents circulate in the social media platforms. We cannot allow ourselves to be infiltrated by fake news and hate speech because that is not what journalism is being built on. No, we manage information. So no fake news come into us and we are online too. So we check and balance. We need to begin to develop a critical culture among our children and among our students, a culture that equips them to detect falsehood and to respond appropriately. Although fake news and hate speech are not new, but the effect in this era of globalization is more devastating than before, and so the stakeholders suggest more efforts on public enlightenment, especially with 2019 general election approaching. In Abuja, Usman Aliu, NTA News. The Kano State All Progressives Congress Caucus in the National Assembly has endorsed President Muhammad Buhari for 2019. National Assembly correspondent Ignatius Unko reports that the Kano State legislators also passed a vote of confidence in Governor Abdullahi Umar Ganduje of Kano State. Members of the Senate and House of Representatives from Kano State, in a clear statement of conviction, assured the All Progressives Congress that Kano State will deliver more than 5 million votes for the re-election of President Muhammadu Buhari come 2019. Really, you saw, there has never been a right like that in the, in the whole of this country. There has never been a right like that in this country. That's why we did that before addressing this press. And we want again to reinforce what you saw on Saturday here by passing vote of confidence on Mr. President and our dear governor. And we want to assure you, we are going to surpass that 5 million votes we promised Buhari. The caucus also passed vote of confidence in Governor Abdullahi Umar Ganduje, whom they described as an exemplary leader. Dr. Ganduje, who came into office when a lot of factors seemed terribly against the tide of permeance for any state chief executive, especially the factor of economic downturn, typified by the huge slide, the size of federal allocation accruable to the states, shocked many with outstanding achievements in the various sectors while ranging from infrastructural development to human capital development. That what we have done this afternoon is like a statement of solidarity by the National Assembly caucus members from Kano State to identify with our dear Governor Dr. Abdullahi Umar Ganduji. This is our position. We will stand by him. And by extension, this has also registered our support to Mr. President Muhammad Buhari come 2019 during the general election. The legislators observed that the leadership of Governor Ganduje brought unprecedented socio-economic development in Kano State. From the National Assembly, Ignatius Nko, NTN News. More politics now. Presidential candidates of all the political parties are to sign a peace accord on the 11th of December 2018 in Abuja ahead of the 2019 elections. This is coming from the National Peace Committee, chaired by former Head of State, General Abdul Salami Abu Bakr. Timothy Yusuf reports. Since Nigeria's return to civil rule in 1999, 
the country has conducted several elections with varying degrees of violence. The lead up to the 2015 general elections generated so much tension and fear that many informed analysts both within and outside the country predicted the disintegration of Nigeria. The prediction was, however, in futility, due largely to the January 14, 2015 National Sensitization Workshop on Nonviolence in the 2015 elections, in which all the presidential candidates and political parties contesting the election signed a peace accord, committing themselves to peaceful conduct during the polls. History is about to repeat itself as the country gears towards the 2019 general elections with this interactive session convened for all the political parties, their presidential candidates in Nigeria, and members of the National Peace Committee in Abuja. We have resolved to adopt the same principles that guided the very successful 2015 elections. Chairman of the National Peace Committee, General Abdul Salami Abubakar, says the political arena must be sensitized. In view of certain comments capable of breaching peace in the country. Invariably, the people you want to lead must be alive in the first place before you lead them. The committee's chairman also cautioned on the need for politicians to shun vote buying, which he describes as great threat to the nation's democracy. Participants to the interactive session raised some concerns ahead of the poll. Signing that electoral act at uh, this time of uh, electioneering period, which will have only two, three months to our election, will be a counterproductive. It might be helpful if the committee finds it worthwhile to invite men and women of God <coughs> so that they don't turn the places of worship to preach hate. Uh, we can be very certain that the coming election will be more credible, peaceful, and also free and fair. Presidential standard bearer of the All Progressives Congress, President Muhammad Buhari, has already assured the National Peace Committee of his presence at the International Conference Center, Abuja, on the 11th of next month for the signing of the peace accord. In Abuja, Timothy Yusuf, NT News. In the meantime, the People's Democratic Party has inaugurated its presidential campaign council with a call on members to work towards the victory of the party at all levels. Timothy Yusuf has that report as well. The president of the Senate, Dr. Bukola Saraki, is the director general of the 154-member PDP Presidential Campaign Council. He implores members to be issue-based during the campaign period. Let us discuss the issues that are before us. Let us discuss how we're going to make Nigeria a better place. The party's presidential candidate, Atiku Abubakar, calls for signing of the new electoral act into law. We have tried to put in place a campaign structure that will ensure uniformity in our operations. Of course, states can set up structures that address local peculiarities. National Chairman of the PDP, Prince Uche Secondus, who is Chairman of the Presidential Campaign Council, and other speakers call on members to play the game according to the rule. The party's presidential campaign kicks off from Sokoto State. Meanwhile, the party's National Executive Council meeting, NEC, also held at the National Secretariat of the PDP this Thursday in Abuja. Timothy Yusuf, NT News. The federal government has called on foreign countries to exercise restraint in their dealings with Nigerians so as not to create the impression that they're favorably disposed to a particular candidate ahead of the 2019 elections. Information and Culture Minister Lai Mohammed stated this during an interaction with newsmen in Abuja. Anthony Fawson reports. The Information and Culture Minister, while appreciating the bilateral ties that exist between Nigeria and other countries, noted that it will be desirable for friendly countries who have maintained cordial relationship to be wary of actions that might jeopardize their integrity. The issue of Atiqua Obaka and the grant of the and the um, effort to uh, to secure a visa to, to visit the U.S. I, I must say that um, we're not at all in any panic at all. It is the prerogative of any, of the U.S. in particular, 
to grant a visa to anybody who applies and who deserves the visa. But we want to warn the U.S. government not to give um, uh, the impression that it's endorsing one particular candidate over the other, and that is what is going to happen if, for instance, the former vice president is now granted a visa. When asked to comment on the state of security and insurgency, the minister said, If you want me to address the issue of police or security, uh, you know, partisanship, please let's have the facts. If we have the facts, then we're able to make an informed judgment. Is it through the police is this, or is it through the police is that? Anybody who is well versed in insurgency will appreciate that what happened last week, it's, not, it's nothing but a setback. And I think it, it, it's not um, to, to say that the war against insurgency is not going well. The journalist took advantage of the platform to ask him on the state of affairs in Kwara politics. God has been very kind. The people spoke. And I want to tell you, by the grace of God, that this is just the beginning. The minister, however, appealed to Nigerians to be wary of unsubstantiated stories, saying this is a season for the spewing of fake news and hate speech, as those who are bent on pulling down this government will stop at nothing to pursue their cause. In Abuja, Anthony Forson, NTN News. And in other news, the Victim Support Fund has launched its 2018-2019 school year program targeting school children in Adama, Borno, and Yobe states. Mary Adamu reports that the chairman of the fund, General T. White Anjuma, who launched the program in Hong, local government area in Adama state, said the idea is to lift the standard of education. Before the intervention, the communities of Gaya Shikalmi and Gaya Fa, through communal efforts, constructed two blocks of mud classrooms after the school was destroyed by insurgents. With the launch of the program, the two blocks of classrooms and offices in the two communities will make teaching and learning comfortable. And the provision of learning materials to school children who do not have access to educational materials is expected to improve their learning capability. Under the 2018-2019 Educational Support Program, 64,000 primary school pupils and 10,000 junior secondary school students across 171 schools were identified and registered to benefit from the project in Adama, Bomo, and Yobe states. General Tiwa Benjuma, represented by Executive Director, Victims Support Fund, VSP, Sunday Oyibi, said apart from the educational materials, school furniture, school uniforms will also be provided in addition to training of teachers. Speakers at the occasion, including Representative of Governor Muhammad Umar Jibilla, lauded the intervention geared towards providing qualitative education in areas affected by insurgency. In Yola, Mary Adam, NTA News. Ogun State Government has reaffirmed its commitment to continue to work in synergy with investors to fast-track economic development. The State Governor, Ibikuni Amusun, stated this during an inspection of some projects under construction across the state. He was accompanied by Mr. Tayo Amusun, Chairman Persians Group, and Yemidu, a real estate investor. Liko Agbonde reports. A thriving economy is no doubt a product of synergy between the government and the private sector, where the government is only expected to serve as catalyst that prepares relevant forces to drive the economy. The present administration in Ogun State is not taking with kid gloves its anger for economic development, even as it costs home in less than six months. The drive for infrastructural development has been in full throttle as contractors have increased the tempo of work to meet deadlines to complete ongoing projects across the state. In this vein, the city center under construction at Okeilewo area of the state capital, which is one of the mega projects of the Senator Ibikula Moson led administration, is moving at a fast pace. The mega project with an amphitheater 
shopping malls and other facilities has reached advanced stage of completion as the governor with some of the investors inspected the project. We had several others that believe in what we are doing and they are supporting us. All of them, they are building something here in this complex. So we really cannot thank them enough. But by and large, we will continue to encourage them as a government. We'll continue to create that enabling environment for them to thrive. The investors are not taking the opportunity provided by the state government for granted. You can have a city within a city, you know, a place where everybody can gather, you know, and I saw that potential and he had that dream also. And I said, okay, let's put something here that would bring in people from all over the country and possibly West Africa. Um, I'm going to be coming more and more and uh, hopefully um, the ancillary investments that will have to come with this will do it as well. Government promised to continue to push towards all-round economic development that would make the state a reference point in the committee of states in the country. In Abeokuta, Lekon Agbonde, NTN News. The Nigerian government has been advised to strengthen its laws to curb piracy and theft of intellectual property as part of its drive to diversify the economy. The advice came at a training program for judges on intellectual property in Nigeria. Femi Okowu reports. Nigeria is now respected the world over for her high volume of creativity in intellectual property. Followers of the nation's economy even attribute a high rate of growth in the economy to the activities in this sector. But experts at a two-day training of Nigerian judges on intellectual property cases warn that piracy and intellectual property theft can bring down the nation's economy if the justice system is not strengthened to deal with this area. The Nigerian uh, filmmakers and other, of course, uh, uh, right holders should protect their, their filmmaking and also by, by valuing this filmmaking, uh, by making it uh, something that we, they can get and profit from and uh, develop their economy. In. It is thought that the lack of prosecution of violators of intellectual property is the cause of the upsurge in piracy in Nigeria. We should have in the region of about 150 pending copyright cases before federal high courts all over the country and in the last few years, eight years, we have, out of those cases, the Federal High Court has um, um, discharged about 59, so we've secured about 59 convictions of copyright offenders. The training of the Nigerian judges is a collaboration of the World Intellectual Property Organization and the Nigerian Copyright Commission. In Abuja, Femi Okewu, NT News. It's now time for our next set of reports from Lagos as we link up with Elizabeth in our Lagos Network Center. Hello, Elizabeth. It's good to see you, Cyril, and thanks for joining us in Lagos. Experts in the judicial sector have recommended measures to prison sentencing in high-end magistrate courts. This, they say, will encourage speedy trial and reduce incidences of pre-trial detention. Abolore Ogba reports that the recommendation is contained in the findings and case monitoring in Lagos. The three-year project aimed at enhancing integrity in the criminal justice system through court observations used the laws in federal capital territory, Lagos and Ondo State, as case study. To arrive at these findings, partners West Africa Nigeria worked closely with chief judges, supervising judges, and court registrars who approved access for them in the courts across the states. A total of 25 observers were deployed across high and magistrate courts in Lagos State, for instance. The findings, which commenced in March 2018, were concluded in September. We thought that it was wise for us to be able to assess what they are doing, how far the implementation is going, and where there are lapses, where there are gaps, so that we can make recommendations so that the judiciary, the government, can see, okay, these are the areas we need to work on. 
stakeholders in the sector say there is need to invest in the capacity of criminal justice actors in the state. Organizations that are on ground having this data, like uh, fight against corruption, judiciary, the data will help us in the way and manner we approach in solving the problem. Presentation of findings assessment by the project team was based on court observation, average time of court sittings, locations of court sittings, supports available to courts, and attendance to court list. The program was an opportunity for legal practitioners and stakeholders to deliberate on the way forward in the judicial sector. In Lagos, Abolore Obara, NT News. Lagos State Governor Akiomi Ambodi has urged security agencies to take practical steps to be ahead of criminal elements. He was speaking at the 12th Town Hall meeting on security organized by the Lagos State Government. Nosa Osula reports. The State Commissioner of Police, Imohimi Edgar, commended Governor Ambode for his massive investment and commitment to security of lives and property, saying the achievements recorded by the command were largely due to the support of the state government. We must be able to communicate two-way with our operatives everywhere in the state, from the Pepe Guru to Badai to everywhere. But that is not possible now, because some of our leaders that at night and in the Kenya, some of them are broken down. And this will cost tons and tons of millions of dollars. The commissioner added that the governor recently approved the procurement of six additional gunboats to effectively police the waterways, among other security interventions by the state government. Governor Ambody said, though the security agencies deserve commendations for their efforts in securing the state, but more strategies and policies have to be adopted to outsmart hoodlums as the country is approaching the 2019 general elections. Our return on investment has been very good. And then the collaboration has been very nice. The private sector has been wonderful. But again, we need to increase investment in technology and also you know, communication kits. I reiterate that to continue to support security agencies. In Lagos, Nusa, Osula, NTA News. You're still watching NT Network News. More reports ahead after this time out. Stay with us. We're back in Abuja and there's prosperity. Talk about prosperity in Nigeria. Look no further as Chukunamso Mwabweze is here with the details. Chukunamso, let's hear it from you. Thank you, Cyril. We're looking at Nigeria's latest upward movement mm -hmm. after 12 solid years. Mm -hmm. Hello and a warm welcome to Business News. And we begin on a cheering note as Nigeria recorded a leap on the 2018 Legaton Prosperity Index, LPI of most prosperous countries in the world. At 129, the nation moved up by three points from its 132nd position of the index in 2006, the first date time the country would achieve such a feat. The index, which measures prosperity using nine pillars comprising economic quality, business environment, governance, personal freedom, social capital, safety and security, education, health, and natural environment shows that the country rose 12 places on the business environment pillar. The LPI is an annual ranking developed by Ligaton Institute, a division of the United Arab Emirates based private investment from Ligaton. Meanwhile, the Development Bank of Nigeria, DBN, said it has signed on at least 35,000 micro, small and medium enterprises, MSMEs, within its first full year of operation. The managing director of the bank, Mr. Tony Obanachi, said the number translated to a 75% increase over the 20,000 micro, small and medium enterprises projection earlier announced for the year. Moving on, the equities market was bearish today, depreciating by minus 1.33% to close at 30,611.55 basis points with more than 400 million shares exchanging hands in 3,648 deals valued at more than 4 billion naira. Market capitalization stood at 11 trillion naira. Financial services sector recorded the highest patronage with Universal Insurance, Assets Bank, and Stambik IBTC holdings topping the table. And that concludes business news at this time. Thanks for being there. I am Chukunonso Mwabweze. It's back to you, Cyril. Thank you, Chukunonso. 
Nobel laureate Professor Wally Shuika is among honorary doctorate degree recipients, which he says may be his last award from the Ivory Tower, as the Federal University of Agriculture Abeokuta holds its 26th convocation ceremony in Abeokuta. Correspondent Muhammad Adibo Ali reports that a total of 3,396 graduates bagged various degrees at the ceremony. That was the conferment of honorary doctorate degree of letters on the Nobel laureate Professor Wale Shoyinka at the 26th Convocation Ceremony of the Federal University of Agriculture at Belkuta. Shortly after receiving the award, Professor Wale Shoyinka appreciated the institution's management for the honor done him and promised to continue to use his depth of knowledge to impact the Nigerian society positively. This is less. Honoring the dream that I received from them. What a beautiful case. This is a vast the guest speaker at the convocation lecture, Professor Tony Falola of the Department of History, University of Texas, was also conferred with the honorary doctorate degree of letters. There is no simple cause to Africa's food crisis. It developed over time through complex historical and economic circumstances. A layered problem requires a layered solution. The 26th convocation ceremony was adjudged a significant event in the lives of the 2016-2017 set of graduates and the school management. The university service is committed to quality assurance and has responded to challenges very adequately to advantage. Ms. Akinyele Olua Tobiloba Oyinda Mola of the Department of Nutrition and Dietetics emerged the overall best children of the year. The fact that I crossed from agricultural technology to nutrition and dietetics because it was a totally different ball game for me. I never envisioned myself being, a, being the best graduating student of the university. A total of 3,396 students graduated at the ceremony in Abelkuta, Mohamed Adibawali, NTA News. Our next stop is Maiduguri and we link up with Mohamed. Hello, Mohamed. Hello, Cyril. Thank you and welcome to Major Green. The All Progressives Congress Party National Peace and Reconciliation Committee for the Northeast has met with aggrieved aspirants of the last primaries with assurance to treat all discontent and give members a sense of belonging. The meeting in Meduguri, the Borno State Capital, chaired by Nasra State Governor Mar Tanko Al Makura, received presentations from aggrieved aspirants from Borno and Yobe states. Mohamed Goni reports. The National Peace and Reconciliation Committee for the Northeast was in Maiduguri in compliance with its mandate from the National Working Committee of the APC to reconcile all individual and groups. The chairman, Nasarawa State Governor, Omar Tanko Alamakura, said the committee neither adjudicates nor arbitrates but mediatory and appealed to the aggrieved aspirants to limit themselves to the committee's guideline. Our aim and objective is to ensure an enhanced platform that will bring peace, stability, cohesion in our party. The deputy chairman of the committee, Jigawa State Governor Muhammad Aubakar Badaru, described the response by the agreed members as a demonstration of their loyalty to the APC when it was time for the agreed persons to present their grievances. Government and the party officials were asked to leave the venue. We've already laid complaint to the reconciliation committee set up by His Excellency Governor Kashim Shetima. We want them to all bring the aggrieved person to stay in the party. Aggrieved members with the same complaints have been advised to jointly present their cases to save time and to enable the mediatory exercise achieve its objective of reconciling all this content from the last primaries in the two states. In Maiduguri, Mahmoud Goni, NTA News. Activities of humanitarian service organizations supporting recovery of communities in Borno and Yobe states is attracting fraudsters who have succeeded in defrauding operators of businesses of over 60 million naira in both states. Zonal head of EFCC Borno Yobe Command Aminu Ado Aliu had in a 2018 last quarter operational briefing urged individuals and organizations to comply with anti-money laundering laws to avoid falling victims to the swindlers. 
The report is here presented. The Anti-Graft Agency says during the last quarter of 2018, it secured four convictions, including that of a senior lawyer sentenced to seven years, recovered 24 million naira belonging to groups and individuals, as well as rejected 37 petitions. Zonal Head Borno Yobe Aminu Ado says the Commission is now worried by the rampant cases of victims who suffer financial fraud perpetrated by fake contractors parading themselves as food suppliers to non-governmental organizations in Borno and Yobe state to unsuspecting business owners. By AFF Act, even the landlord who gave them the place to, to hire is supposed to do KYC, know your customer. You can't just somebody come to your place, use your premises, or this, I don't know where. You'll be here for school. He cited three cases where the fraudsters who claimed to be agents of NGOs presented fake purchase orders and made away with 40 million naira, another 15 million naira, plus 4 million naira, respectively. The FCC called on the public to be wary of such fraudulent transactions which are on the increase and verify contract documents before releasing funds. Another disturbing trend the anti-graft agency revealed is fraudulent cash investment companies who lure investors for quick profits based on weekly returns on investments. That is all for our contribution and from this end is back to Cyril in Abuja. Thank you Mohammed, and it's another break. We'll be right back. The death has been announced of Chief Felix Chukudi in Naramile at the age of 82. A renowned educationist, political and community leader, late Chief Nuram Mele was active with the Zikist movement in the 60s and served as the secretary of the NCNC Ikeja, Lagos. He remained deeply in politics until his death. He'll be buried tomorrow Friday the 30th of November in his compound after a funeral service at 11 o'clock in the morning at St. Barnabas Anglican Church, Ahia Zumbise local government area, Imu State. And that concludes Network News tonight. We well, thank you for watching. I'm Cyril Stober. Good night.